Hello YouTube, and yes, I do have another deck tech for you guys. I've been brewing a lot lately. I just haven't had time to record, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this uh, alternate version of Pure Steel Cheerios. For those of you who may not know, Pure Steel Cheerios is a deck that uses Pure Steel Paladin, one of my favorite cards, and a lot of zero casting artifacts to basically abuse his metalcraft ability, and also draw tons of cards every time an equipment comes into play. So this is my take on it. Uh, it's pretty similar in certain ways, but it's also kind of budget friendly because it doesn't have uh, the moxes and so forth. But uh, I think uh, it still is pretty fun to play, especially in casual uh, games, and so check it out. For cards, we have creatures. We have a playset of Pure Steel Paladin, of course. You must have a playset, play or else this deck really won't work out that well. Uh, you basically want at least one in your opening hand, so this is a deck that is kind of mulligan heavy as well. Uh, you want to use it mainly, again, because of its Metalcraft to equip all these artifact uh, equipment onto him or onto your other creatures. And uh, basically for its first ability to keep on drawing cards uh, with every equipment that comes into play. If you happen to have two of them, um, that's even great, uh, that's even better because you're drawing two cards per equipment and you can basically immediately get into your win con condition as quickly as possible. Well, the main difference for this deck for me is that I have a play set of Myth Realize. Myth Realize was a card that I really enjoyed in the beginning. Uh, it's, it's not a bad card in my opinion, especially in this deck. It is an enchantment uh, every every time you cast a non-creature spell, you put a counter on it, and you can also put counters on it by itself. But if you pay one white, you can turn it into a creature with power and toughness equal to the counters on it. So you can imagine, if you have this on your first uh, opening hand, you play it, you play, you know, a couple of uh, zero casting equipments, and then you keep on adding counters, so you have a turn... Two, uh, usually three, three, four, four, even a five, five attacking, and unless they have removal, which I hope they don't, uh, you're dealing five damage, and that's a very quick clock for your opponents. Then we have two monastery mentors. Uh, monastery mentors is a great card. It has prowess by itself, but every time you cast a non-creature spell, you get to put a one-one white monk creature token. Also has prowess as well, and so again, you can imagine all the equipments that you're casting for free. You're building a lot of tokens. It's basically the white version of a uh, young pyromancer, and you can quickly overrun your opponents with all the tokens. For equipment, we have three sigil of distinctions. Uh, it is an X casting cost, which counts as zero. I normally don't uh, play anything with the charge counters. I just play it for free, but you know it has that flexibility if you want to use it for uh, last chance, last resort win condition with your pure steel paladins. We also have a play set of bone saws. It's also zero cast, um, but a crit creature gets plus one plus zero. So again, if it, these are just last resorts of ways of winning the game, uh, just equipping your creatures and hopefully dealing the last points of damage. Spiritic knelt is another one, a zero casting cost, a quarter shield, same thing. Uh, I use it mainly for its vigilance, but it can uh, help protect your creatures because of the uh, toughness boost. And then we have our win conditions. Uh, Paradise Mantle is here, also because it is it costs zero, but uh, mainly because it gives you the ability to cast uh, mana of any color, which you will need for your win conditions. Retract is one of your main ways of winning. You can see what it does. Return all artifacts you control to your, your hand for one blue mana, and you have all these equipments onto the battlefield. You bring it back to your hand, you cast them all over again, you keep on giving counters to your Myth Realize, you keep on uh, drawing cards from your Pierce of Paladin, keep on making Monk tokens with your mentors, and so forth. So you can see how powerful that can get and how annoying that can get for your opponents. And then we have just one Grape Shot. Uh, you can also understand that all the equipments that you're casting for free, for zero, uh, will build up your storm count, and that will definitely uh, do a lot of damage. Here's the thing, if you have a pure soul paladin now, most likely as you're casting these equipments, you will draw your win conditions pretty well. And um, this is a very fun deck to play because if you love drawing cards, you will love this deck. For protection, we just have one Swift Foot Boots. Uh, I put only one, mainly because it costs two mana and you want to actually, you know, draw cards with zero casting equipment as much as possible, but it is there to help your Paladins and your creatures uh, stay protected. We have three Faith Shields, that's also for uh, good protection. 
Uh, you can go back and forth on Apostles' Blessings on this, but I chose Faith Shield mainly because uh, it protects your permanence, not just your creatures. And so, again, depending on your meta, you can go back and forth on uh, Apostles' Blessings. Then we have a playset of Cathaxian Probes. Um, it's uh, protection in the sense that you do want to see what your opponent has. If they have any counters, you don't want them to counter your Peristyle Paladins your main win conditions, and is also a way to basically just filter through your deck as quickly as possible, and also count up the storm count and also activate prowess as well. For lands, um, I'm a poor guy, I don't really have any fetch lands or anything like that, but if you do have fetch lands, those are highly recommended because they do thin out your deck, uh, which allows you to pull out um, you know, your creatures and your win conditions as fast as possible. The land loss is not too uh, uh, significant, mainly because this is a combo heavy deck. Um, I do have a couple of fast lands from the Scars of Mirrodin uh, set. Those seem to work out pretty well. Uh, you do want to have a couple of blue sources so you can cast your retracts. You can't depend on your um, your Paradise Mantles for all the color mana. So in uh, Ancient Dens, those are banned in modern, of course, but if you're playing this casually, you can put those in to activate Metalcraft uh, sooner. And so that's always a good addition to your decks. So uh, land-wise, it is flexible based on how much money you guys have and based on what you guys are actually playing. That is it for this deck. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You want to actually... Um, you know, if you want to draw a lot, you will like this deck. And being able to cast Grape Shot for... You know, maybe 15, 16, just because you've been casting nothing but equipment. Uh, it's a pretty strange but funny feeling. And uh, if you like those type of decks, then I, I encourage you guys to check it out. Please like and subscribe. Please comment below if you have any uh, comments or just, you know, uh, suggestions on what I could add or get rid of in this deck. But uh, let me uh, let me uh, let me know that what you guys think if you actually test it out and see what you what type of games you guys are playing. Thanks for watching, guys.